Evening everyone, we're going to try and get started here uh, with number 88 in the 11th edition, and it's number 83 in the 12th edition. 88 and 83. <laughs> Next we'll sing number 85 in the 11th edition, and it's number 80 in the 12th, 85 and 80.
Next, we'll sing number 86 in 11th edition, and it's 81 in the 12th. 86 and 81. <laughs> Number uh, number eighty nine in the eleventh edition and eighty four in the twelfth. Eighty nine and eighty four.
Let's sing a couple verses of number 91 in the 11th edition, 86 in the 12th edition. 91, 86, first and last verse. Thank you, Brother Caleb. Uh, good evening, everyone, and welcome to our worship service. It's good to see and uh, see your faces and to see your names that have uh, joined with us online this evening. Um, we're thankful for each one of you that's uh, set apart um, at this time of your life uh, to uh, gather together. Uh, we hope and trust with one heart and one mind to um, hear about our great God and master, our Lord Jesus Christ. In the 133rd Psalm, it says, Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. I'm thankful uh, that it's a portion of the Lord's uh, saints that are here this evening in unity. Uh, in the book of Acts, it says that they, <clears throat> in the second chapter, I believe, that they met together daily with one heart and one mind, uh, that they would uh, continue to serve the Lord, and I believe in unity. Uh, so uh, it's good to see each one of you tonight. We hope and trust that you've prayed, and we'll continue to pray as we meet together this evening. It's good to have Elder Oots with us this evening, our faithful friend. Uh, we uh, are thankful for him. Uh, we're thankful for all the members at Meta Creek. We're thankful for those that uh, meet there and have uh, led us in the hymns that uh, we have been singing. We certainly appreciate it and are thankful to the Lord for you. Um, <clears throat> we have uh, several that we want to try and remember as we go to the Lord in prayer. Uh, we want to remember Sister Lisa. She has some minor outpatient surgery tomorrow. So we pray the Lord's uh, blessing upon that. Uh, Son-in-law uh, Justin has uh, some outpatient knee surgery tomorrow. We ask the Lord's blessing in uh, that. We pray the Lord's watch care over all that would take place there. Uh, Sister Lisa's brother David uh, has been going through some more medical complications. Uh, he is scheduled to have surgery tomorrow to amputate one of his toes. Uh, we ask the <clears throat> Lord's uh, blessing upon him. Uh, we continue to be in prayer for uh, Brother Gene and Sister Virginia, Sister Ruth and Sister Wanda. Pray the Lord's continued blessing upon them. 
Uh, we remember, uh, want to be in prayer for Brother Marshall and Sister Laura Gaskew, Brother Irvin and Sister Judy Hatley as well. Uh, we want to remember the family of Sister Joyce Smith, who went home to be with the Lord yesterday, faithful member there at Happy Creek. So we ask the Lord's blessing uh, with that family uh, and as well, our natural as well as our spiritual family there at Happy Creek. Um, we continue to be in prayer for Sister Merlin. Uh, we're thankful and hope, trust in the Lord for uh, her continued well uh, being uh, asked to pray for my mom as well. Uh, Sister Mary Catherine, uh, she's been in the nursing home. She's scheduled to go home. Uh, Brother Jonathan is still pretty weak, but has made some improvements. Uh, we continue to be in prayer for Elder E.W. and <clears throat> Sister Linda, excuse me. Um, we uh, continue to be in prayer for our country. We ask the Lord's continued grace and mercy upon us. Uh, thankful for it. Pray the Lord's continued blessing upon it. Um, <clears throat> we are ask the Lord's continued blessing on our military as well as our first responders. Uh, we um, ask the Lord to uh, bless us this evening um, to continue to strengthen and encourage us in this uh, world in which we live. Uh, we were singing the hymn um, through the chat, through the shadow, I believe it was. And it says, through the dark skies, oh, let me see glimmerings of eternity. Uh, what a great blessing it is as we uh, sometimes struggle through this life, whatever may come our way. Uh, and then we're just blessed by our supreme God that we have a, a glimmering or a glimpse of eternity, and we have a, uh, we have a, um, we have this hope of eternal life and this uh, longing for it. As uh, Brother Gary uh, put in um, his message when he sent out about uh, Sister Smith and her, Joyce Smith and her passing, that uh, she has gone on to be with the Lord, and about this um, reservation that we have in heaven that's uh, undefiled. And, reserved for us uh, so you know that's <laughs> what a blessing that is uh, you know us in our flesh are able to rejoice in a glimpse a glimpse of eternity uh, that sure beats the alternative doesn't it um, oh. so that being said uh, is there anyone else that uh, someone would like to call out uh, before we go to the Lord in prayer <clears throat> okay, uh, no one else being mentioned. We'd like to have a hymn as a way of opening. We're going to ask Elder Uz if he'll preach for us this evening. Uh, we ask, pray that uh, the Spirit be upon him. Uh, I'll attempt to open prayer with uh, service with prayer and uh, have me in your thoughts and prayers as well. Uh, Brother Caleb, what number do y'all want to lead us in? Elder Eddie, I've turned to number 92 in the 11th, and it's 87 in the 12th. 92 and 87. He's a Savior, Lord of me. Say 
Let us pray. <clears throat> our most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, once again we bow our heads unto Thee, knowing our unworthiness and our lack of the ability to pray, Lord. We ask Thy strength upon us. We're thankful, Lord, once again for the opportunity that we have to set aside time with a, a desire to come and worship in thy name. We are thankful, Lord, for the fellowship that thou has blessed us with, uh, with a portion of thy people as we walk in this uh, world. We're thankful, Lord, uh, for each one of them that's gathered here this evening. Uh, we'd ask, Lord, that thou would continue to bless and strengthen all those in attendance, Lord, we just pray that thou would open up their hearts and minds, that they would learn more and know more and feel more of thee as we live in this world, knowing, Lord, that um, until thou return or unless thou wouldst come back, that uh, we will, all will go, go the way of the grave, uh, waiting, Lord, to be awakened once more uh, upon the resurrection of these bodies. We have so much to be thankful for. We have a list of dear ones, Lord, that are going uh, through sicknesses and afflictions. Uh, many have upcoming surgeries tomorrow. We just pray, Lord, thou watch care upon them. Uh, let them feel thy presence with them in whatever uh, trial or tribulation or affliction they may be going through, knowing that thou hast promised that thou will never leave them uh, nor forsake them. We're thank thankful, Lord, we hope and trust first and foremost of all, for our Savior, Jesus Christ, who has redeemed us, who has reconciled us unto thee uh, as he went to the cross at Calvary in a display of his great love and mercy towards his people, that he has redeemed them uh, once and for all and purged our sins uh, and all that he did for us. What a great, glorious gospel thou has blessed us with, dear Lord. Uh, we pray for this country in which we live. We'd ask, Lord, thy spirit upon us as we would um, live here in this country, that thou would give us the, the spirit and the, the desire that we would uh, need as to, to live in this country, to give on, giving honor and glory unto thee, Lord. We, help, we ask thy mercy upon us that we would be the citizens that would be honoring and pleasing to thee, uh, bless the leaders that stand in rule and authority over us. Uh, we pray, Lord, that thou would turn their heart unto thee and things that would be done according to thy will. Uh, we're thankful, Lord, for the ministers that thou has blessed us with. Uh, we know, dear Lord, that uh, Brother Gary stands wanting and in need of thy power as he awaits the time that he would speak uh, before thy people that are hungering and thirsting after this righteousness and this truth. Uh, the glorious gospel, and we just pray, Lord, uh, that thou would give him a sense of ease and peace, knowing uh, that thou hast power, and that would deliver him once more. Lord, we know that thou has been with him and delivered him hundreds of times as he stood before uh, the Lord's people, and Lord, we know by experience that he feels uh, new and uh, fresh at this time, uh, knowing that he needs thy power as much as he has ever needed it. And we're thankful, Lord, that thou power has not diminished one bit. So we'd ask, Lord, that thou would let him feel the liberty of his calling. Let him feel that he is guided and empowered by the Lord to bring forth this gospel message to us uh, this evening, Lord. And we'd ask, Lord, a touching on each one of our hearts that we could receive it in love, uh, that we would keep it with us. And it would um, have its desired effect upon us that we would be persuaded, Lord, that we're more than conquerors through him that has loved us. All that we have uh, is in our Savior, Jesus Christ, and all that we have, we owe to him. So we ask, Lord, that uh, that would bless us and strengthen us to be better disciples. Uh, and we ask, Lord, that we would repent and turn and be uh, better followers of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Once again, Lord, we just uh, pray that we would see uh, thy, thy power manifested in our meeting this evening. And all these things we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 
Brother Gary, it's good to see you this evening, and uh, we'll continue to pray for you. Appreciate so much that dear prayer, Brother Eddie, and the words that you were given by the Lord to speak regarding our need of the Lord's blessing to be able to preach the gospel is certainly the truth that without the Lord's uh, manifest presence and feeling his uh, strength, his wisdom, his light, uh, that we don't have any of those things without him. Uh, but in him, we have all things that we stand in need of tonight. Uh, and we look to him and I ask each of you just to pray for me for the time that I might be before you. I uh, sometimes worry a little bit about coming on each Wednesday night. I don't want to interfere or take the time of Brother Eddie uh, from the congregation. And uh, I try to leave that all in the hands of the Lord and the leadership of the Holy Spirit. But uh, I do want to express that, that any time I'm able to sit here and listen, I'm happy with that. And uh, that's the reason I like coming on is I get to hear uh, – Brother Eddie and others, I had heard and thought Brother Joe was going to maybe be with us tonight and did hear from him that he wasn't going to be. I had even volunteered to come over and help him with some of his work yesterday in order to be able to make sure he had time to be with us here tonight. But uh, unfortunately, some of his work is not anything I think I can help him with. And he got called in and uh, though he wanted to be here, was not able to be here. And uh when I got that call, I, I was already a little on edge, but then that gave me a little more reason to be on edge. And uh, I believe confession is good for us, so I'm just letting y'all know kind of how I'm feeling tonight. I just uh, need the blessings that come from the Lord in order to to be what He would have me to be. Uh, and I do want to rightly divide the word of truth. I do you know, want to be able to speak clearly the gospel that gives honor and glory and praise to the Lord. And I do want to do it in a way that uh, you let your light so shine, not just shine, but let it so shine that all the glory and all the honor and the praise might be given to the Lord and not any given unto man or to me especially. So just pray for me tonight that as we look together at a portion of scripture that uh, I've been looking at really all day that the Lord would just bless us with uh, liberty to speak and uh, to share with you the truth that is here in his word. We know that all scripture is given by inspiration of God. It really literally means God breathed it. Uh, it's inspired by God and it's profitable for us and it's profitable for our doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction and righteousness, and it's profitable to the man of God that we may be perfect. That is not without we'd ever get to a place where we're without sin, but that we would be mature and complete and grow in grace and knowledge of the truth, that we may be perfect. Uh, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. And so I'm thankful tonight to have before me the Word of God, the inspired Word of God, and to be able to read it in your hearing. If you have your Bibles and like to turn with me, I'd like to read to you the passage found in John chapter 9, an account of where Jesus, our Savior, heals a blind man who had been blind from his birth and the miraculous working of the Lord Jesus Christ in his life. Here in John chapter 9, we read, as, And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth, and his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither had this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay, and said unto him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation sin. 
And he went his way, therefore, and washed and came seeing. The neighbors, therefore, and they which were before had seen him that he was blind, said, Is not this he that sat and begged? Some said, This is he. Others said, He is like him. But he said, I am he. Therefore said they unto him, How were thine eyes opened? He answered and said, A man that is called Jesus made clay and anointed mine eyes and said unto me, Go to the pool of Siloam and wash. And I went and washed and received sight. Then said they unto him, Where is he? And he said, I know not. They brought to the Pharisees him that aforetime was blind, and it was the Sabbath day when Jesus made the clay and opened his eyes. Then again the Pharisees also asked him how he had received his sight. He said unto them, He put clay upon mine eyes, and I washed and do see. Therefore son, said some of the Pharisees, This man is not of God, because he keepeth not the Sabbath day. Others said, How can a man that is a sinner do such miracles? And there was a division among them. They say unto the blind man again, What sayest thou of him, that he hath opened thine eyes? He said, He is a prophet. But the Jews did not believe concerning him that he had been blind and received his sight until they called the parents of him that had received his sight. And they asked them, saying, Is this your son, whom you say was born blind? How then doth he now see? His parents answered them and said, We know that this is our son, and that he was born blind. But by what means he now seeth, we know not. Or who hath opened his eyes, we know not. He is of age, ask him, he shall speak for himself. These words spake his parents because they feared the Jews. For the Jews had agreed already that if any man did confess that he was Christ, he should be put out of the synagogue. Therefore said his parents, he is of age, ask him. Then again called they the man that was blind and said unto him, Give God the praise, we know that this man is a sinner. He answered and said, Whether he be a sinner or no, I know not. One thing I know, that where I, as he, I was blind, now I see. Then said they to him again, What did he to thee? How opened he thine eyes? He answered them, I have told you already, and ye did not hear. Therefore would ye hear it again? Will ye also be his disciples? Then they reviled him and said, Thou art his disciple." but we are Moses' disciples. We know that God spake unto Moses, as for this fellow, we, not know, we know not from whence he is. And the man answered and said unto them, Why, herein is a marvelous thing, that ye know not from whence he is, and yet he hath opened mine eyes. Now we know that God heareth not sinners, but if any man be a, be a worshiper of God and doeth his will, him he heareth. Since the world began, was it not heard that any man opened the eyes of the one that was born blind? If this man were not of God, he could do nothing. They answered and said unto him, Thou wast altogether born in sins, and dost thou teach us? And they cast him out. Jesus heard that they had cast him out, and when he had found him, he said unto him, Dost thou believe on the Son of God? He answered and said, Who is he, Lord, that I might believe on him? Jesus said unto him, Thou hast both seen him, and it is he that talketh with thee. And he said, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped him. What a beautiful, beautiful account given to us in the word of God of the working of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, even as he walked here on the face of this earth. As Jesus passed by, the first verse says, which for me doesn't just mean he was happened to be walking that way or he just happened to be going that way. I want us to remember what the Bible says about Jesus Christ and every step that he took. Over in the 29th verse of the 8th chapter, he says, And he that sent me is with me. The Father hath not left me alone, for I do always those things that please him. So when we think of the life and the walk of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, remember that every step that he took from the cradle to the cross, 
was in exact agreement with the will of the Father. He was the Word of God that was made manifest in the flesh. He was with God in the beginning. All things were made by him. Was There was not anything made that, that all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. And that word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory as the glory of the only begotten of the Father, and he was full of grace and full of truth. Here we see an evidence of his grace. We also want to remember that this same Jesus who walked here on the shores of time is the Jesus that we preach, the Jesus that's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so that when we see him and his behavior toward his little children in the scripture laid out before us, we can see evidence of how he deals with his people today. And certainly we see him coming to us like he came to this man in our need. He comes to us in our needs here in this world. He knows everything that we stand in need of. And as he passed by, he had, he had just passed away and passed through those Pharisees that had, had, that had come to him. And when he had spoken to them, he told them, why do you not understand my speech, even because you cannot hear my word? There were those that he walked by and that he spoke to couldn't hear what he said. They, they could hear him audibly, but they could not understand his instruction. They could not understand uh, his words because they didn't have an ear. They didn't have life. They didn't have the ability to hear it. But here was one of his little children that stood in need of him, and there he passed by to come right where that little brother was. I think about how he's dealt with us in our lives. If you love the Lord today, it's because he first loved you. If you've called out to God and asked him to be with you and bless you, if you were able tonight to bow your head with Brother Eddie and pray and ask for the Lord's blessing on our land and on our nation and pray for our families and our loved ones and, 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 and those who've lost loved ones and, and pray and look to the Lord, it's because he's given you faith and enabled you to know him and to, enabled you to understand that he is God and beside him there is none other and you call on him because he first called on you. It wasn't because this man found the Lord. Oh, the Lord found him <laughs> and he found him in the place that he was and it wasn't a good place at all. This man was blind. He could not see and he was physically blind. No, I've never experienced what that is. I do understand and know what some blindness is when we can't see the things of God. And thanks be to God that the things that at one time I did not love, today I do love. The things that at one time I did not know, I can know today. Thank the Lord that he's given me a hatred for things that I once loved and a love for things that I once hated. And I believe it's because he saw fit to come where I was and supply for me just like he did for this man. As Jesus passed by, he saw a man that was blind from his birth and his disciples, even his disciples. Sometimes it just amazes me what we as God's children don't see and don't understand. And before I get too hard on them, I want to remember it's me a lot of times that's just like them in so many ways. You know, sometimes we give Peter a real hard way to go because of his doubt and because of his failure to always trust in the Lord because he even betrayed uh, to an extent. He, he turned and, and denied the Lord when he had uh, uh, the trouble that came upon him. But uh, when we think about it, how often are we, uh, uh, a Thomas who doubts the Lord or a Peter who goes the wrong way or disciples that are asking questions and we're sincere in those questions, we're sincere in asking them, but yet uh, we're mistaken. And they certainly was mistaken here. As his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered them. He answered them lovingly. Aren't you thankful that he doesn't cast away when we ask silly, foolish questions, uh, but that he has answered us in his word? Sometimes he'll send us ministers to answer it. Sometimes he'll send us circumstances to answer it. But as we seek him, we will find him. As we ask, he will answer. As we, as we knock, he'll open. Brethren, it's good to know that we can come to the Lord even when we don't 
know all that we should ask. I thought of Brother Eddie's prayer tonight where he asked the Lord just to bless him with the words that he ought to have to even ask the Lord the right things. And that's where I am so often. Circumstances in my life, I sometimes question, Lord, why is this taking place? Why are we having to go through this trouble or that problem or this heartache? And we know ultimately that sin is at the root. Uh, it, God is not the author of evil or confusion, uh, but that when sin entered into the picture, all manner of maladies and problems and troubles come as a result of that. And I've shared with you before uh, where I had a uh, I had a doctor one time when I I asked him what was wrong with me. He told me I had the OLD syndrome. Uh, what meant what he meant was that I was just getting old. Brother Stan, a little later on, when I was sharing that with him, he said he would have been better off just to say it was the SIN syndrome, <laughs> which is absolutely true. And sin is the reason that we have our troubles and our, have our problems in this world. And yet this was a question about a particular problem or a particular trouble. And they wanted to know what particular sin and what particular problem had brought this about. And sometimes the circumstances that come in our lives are not about a particular sin that has occurred. Those sin is at the root of those things. And, and when he says, neither has this man sinned nor his parents, he's not saying that there was no sin in them. All have sinned. The Bible says that we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There's not a just man uh, that lives and that is without sin. And uh, even Solomon said, there's not a man that sinneth not. And we all have come short. And sin is in the picture. But he was saying no particular sin had this man sinned, nor had his parents sinned, but there was a reason that he had been suffered to go through blindness and have this problem. And here was the glorious, wonderful truth that was about to take place. Oh, I'm telling you, a deliverance was about to come in this man's life just like a deliverance has come in our lives when the Lord's grace has shined upon us. He's delivered us time and time again, but this man was about to see one who had never seen. Can you imagine what that was like? One who had never seen the light of day, never seen the beauty of God's creation, never seen uh, the face of his mother or the face of his father, never saw the, never saw his family uh, and had been to, had, had been, uh, left to be a beggar in this world, was about to be allowed to see. I think of the words of John Newton and that hymn, Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found, was blind, but now I see. Brother Newton wasn't talking about being blind uh, physically, but he was talking about a blindness that's just as real and maybe even greater that if it were not for the grace of God in my life and in your life, I don't have an eye to see, an ear to hear, or a heart to understand the things which God had prepared for them that love him. And I'm dependent on the one who has to pass by me and pass by my life. And he's not coming there because just like he didn't come here because the man was inviting him, he couldn't even see Jesus. And as we read this, we see that he knew so little and yet he was learning and Jesus was dealing with him and, and he was growing and, and he learned more and more. But uh, there was so much that he did not know. The idea and the thought of the world is that, that if you know this much and then you learn this much and then you ask the Lord, then the Lord is able. And, but only then, is the Lord able to come help you? Oh, that would be a weak God. That would be a God who's who's dependent on man uh, to ask him to come by. But I'm telling you, this Jesus came where the Father sent him and he did the will of the Father. What did it say over there? He says, I do always those things that what? That please him. And even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight, he hid these things from those mighty uh, self-righteous Pharisees who thought they knew so much, who felt like they had eyes to see, but they were blinded. He hid those things from the wise and prudent, and he revealed them unto babes. He opened the eyes of a blind man so that he could see naturally. But more importantly than that, when this man, when the Lord was finished with this man, I'm telling you, he had, he had, he already had a friend 
in Jesus. He already had one who loved him before the foundation of the world. He had one who had chosen him in covenant. The, the father had loved him and he sent the son to come and die for him. And the work of the Holy Spirit had taken place in his heart where he was born of the spirit of God. And he had faith because without faith, it's impossible to believe him. It's impossible to trust him. And the very last words he said, I believe. How could you believe, brother? How could you believe? Because you've been given life. How could you believe? Because you've been born of the Spirit. How could you be born of the Spirit? Because you were chosen of God before the foundation of the world. Because you were loved of God. Because Jesus of Nazareth, Jesus the Son of God, Jesus the light of the world, Jesus the bread of life, Jesus the one who has all power, came and when he came, he came in power. And when he spoke, I'm telling you, he didn't have to make clay. He didn't have to spit. He didn't have to do a thing. He could have spoken, but it was his good pleasure to do it this way. <laughs> and all oh, isn't it a way that seems so contrary to everything about man? You know, if somebody came to you and said, let me fix your eyes, I'm going to get some dirt, and I'm going to spit on the dirt, and I'm going to make me some clay, and I'm going to rub that in your eyes, and that's going to make you see uh, everybody in the world would say that man is crazy. That man's lost his mind. I love the scripture that says his ways are not as our ways and his thoughts are not as our thoughts, but as high as the heavens are above the earth, his ways and thoughts are above our ways and thoughts. And when I'm in a problem and I'm in a trouble and I've got a heartache that I don't understand and I want to question God and say, why is it happening? I want to remember this. God is not the author of evil or the author of sin, uh, but he suffers things to be at times that he might even show and manifest his glory in them, uh, just like he did when he allowed Lazarus uh, to pass on, uh, when they called and said, come, our brother is sick, and Jesus tarried for a little while, you know why he tarried, so that the glory of God might be manifest. When Jesus stood before his grave and said, Lazarus, come forth, it required that Lazarus would die before he could be raised again, and Jesus knew exactly what he was going to do. Martha didn't know it. Mary didn't know it. Brother Gary doesn't know it. And I dare say I could say every one of our names tonight. We don't know all the things that are going on in this world, but I'm telling you, there's a God on the throne tonight who's aware of every problem, every situation, everything you and I are going through. And he has the power. He's the light of the world. He's the bread of life. He's the fountain of living waters. He's the way. He's the truth. He's the life. He's the true vine. Uh, listen, he has the power. And as we look to him and lean upon him, we have a savior in the Lord Jesus Christ who is able to save to the other most. Wasn't it good to know that tonight? It's surely good when you've lost a loved one in your heart so broken you don't know which way to turn and you know that he said I prepared a place for you and if I go to prepare a place for you I'm going to come again and receive you unto myself that where I am there ye may be also and that promise was given to every one of his elect children and though they are absent from the body dear ones they're present with the Lord and, and their bodies uh, that have suffered so much here in time uh, they've been freed from that old body for a little while and they're in the presence of the Lord and one day he's going to come and there's going to be a resurrected body and that body won't have the weakness of a weak heart or the weakness of bad knees or the weakness of having to be in a wheelchair or the weakness of having to hobble along in this world but it's going to be a raised in power made in fashion like unto the very glorious body of the son of God and it's all because of what he did for us it's because Jesus passed by, and he passed by because we were given to him by Almighty God the Father, even before the foundation of the world. Y'all believe this tonight? I believe you do, and I believe we find peace in it. I believe we find joy in it, and I believe we find rest for our weary souls, and it gives us, it gives us uh, here in this world, we have an earnest <laughs> of our inheritance. We get a little, we get a little uh, down payment. <laughs> we get a little foretaste. 
How good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell. Brother Eddie read that scripture tonight. How good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. I believe it's a little down payment. I believe it's a little inheritance. I believe it's that which is given to God's little children who've been given the ability to believe and they take that which the Lord has given them and they exercise it in believing and they receive from the Holy Spirit a little foretaste, a little earnest, a little comfort a little joy. You need it tonight? I do. I need it in this old troubled world that's so mixed up, some comfort. I need some rest. Jesus said, you have rest in me. In me, you have all the light you need. In me, you have all the food you need. I'm the bread of life. In me, you have everything that you need naturally and spiritually. Uh, in me, you have a great physician that when you're sick, in him and in him alone. And other than in him, there is no other help. Beside him, there is none other. And I'm glad it's not me and Jesus getting it done or you and Jesus getting it done, but it's in Jesus and him alone and what he's done for us. Poor, weak, beggars, sinners. That's what his man saw that the Pharisees could not see. What the Pharisee says that we we can see. We don't, we're not blind. We can see. And Really, the more they said we can see, the more it was hidden from them because they were wise and prudent and they were trusting in us. We're, we're following Moses. Listen, if they were really following Moses, they would have believed in the one that Moses said was going to come because said Moses told us that a prophet was going to come uh, that was greater than he, uh, and, and there was one that was going to follow. If Jesus was taught by Moses, Moses said that he was coming. This one that Moses pointed to that, that was going to come had come, and here he was. The Jesus answered, neither has this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. And oh, don't we see the works of God. Tonight, I'm telling you, when Jesus took that clay and he took that spittle, took that saliva from his mouth, and he made, he made that clay and he rubbed his eyes, that blind man didn't know what he was doing. The Pharisees looking at him didn't know what he was doing. Those around him didn't know what he's doing. It didn't matter what, we, what they knew. It, it, it was about what he knew. He was doing just that which was necessary to bring honor and glory unto the Lord. And he did it in such a way. You know, Jesus healed others that were blind. He didn't do this every time, just this way. This wasn't some magic potion. This wasn't like a magician saying abracadabra. Uh, this wasn't some trick. Uh, they thought it was a trick. They tried to prove that it was a trick, but it was proven over and over again. There was no tricks. Isn't it good to know our Savior didn't come doing tricks? He came and did the will of the Father, and everything that he did was in power. The Egyptians uh, just tried to do uh, those tricks, and they did those tricks, but I'm telling you, uh, they couldn't do, uh, they didn't have the strength, and, and their tricks were shown up. And I'm telling you, that which those Pharisees said, though it was, a, it was a lie, Jesus proved that it was a lie. And the power of God was seen in the working of our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. He said in verse 5, as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. In verse 4, he said, I must work the works of him that sent me. Oh, isn't it good to know that's what he did? Y'all believe that's what he did, that Jesus came to do the will of the Father? And he said, and this is the Father's will which has sent me, that of all that he had given me, I, I should lose nothing but raise it up again at the last day. And Jesus said, I've got a certain amount of time the Father has given to me, and I'm going to work the works of him while it is day and the night's going to come uh, that when no man can work, which means uh, there was going to be coming a time when he would die, and there was it was a necessity that a certain amount of things would be done and fulfilled. Aren't you glad Jesus fulfilled the law to a jot and to a tittle. Aren't you glad he dotted every I and he crossed every T uh, that there wasn't one thing that he did so that when he bowed his head and he said it is finished, there wasn't a voice from heaven. No, you missed something. Oh no. You know why it wasn't a voice that said you missed something? Because he finished the work of redemption. He finished what the father gave him to do. And he didn't do it part of the way. If he had, if he had offered himself uh, an imperfect sacrifice, it would not have been accepted unto God, but he was perfect. He did what? He did always those things that please him. 
You know what other man did that? Not one. Not me, not you, not any of us. As a matter of fact, if we're able to do anything that pleases him, it's because of the one who pleased him in every area and every aspect. And because of his perfect obedience, because of his life, we have life. If he had not offered himself a once unto God, a perfect sacrifice for the sin of his people, you and I would never be praying, never looking to him. The natural man doesn't have it in him. He doesn't want to do it. He cannot do it. He will not do it. Just as he said unto them, ye, he said unto them, ye cannot hear my words. Oh, thanks be to God tonight. If you can hear his words, it's because of what he did for you. Just like what he did for this man. He said unto him, go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation sin. And he went his way therefore and washed and came seeing. Listen, there's a blessing in doing what the Lord tells you to do. But you can't even do what he tells you to do if he doesn't give you the first, the want to, and the ability to hear him and the desire to follow him. Otherwise, this man would have simply said, your words are foolishness and they mean nothing to me. I'm telling you, God moved in his heart in a work of grace and he went and he came seeing. And oh, what a, can you imagine what it was like? I really can't. I can't imagine what it's going to be one day to be with him in glory, but what a glorious day that's going to be. I can't imagine what it was like for this man to see for the first time. You know, I've seen I've seen folks where they would give them an ear, like a, a kind of a, a person who'd never heard, and they allow them to hear sound for the first time. And they they use use some kind of uh they do some kind of implant where they've not been able to hear and they put that implant in and the person hears sound for the first time and their eyes fill up with tears and it runs down their face because they're overwhelmed with the, the ability to hear sound. Oh, we take so much for granted the senses God has given us to be able to hear the sound of birds. My dear grandmother couldn't hear the sound of crickets and she said, I miss them so bad. Most of us hear crickets and wish we couldn't hear them, but she just she just longed. She had a ring in her ears and she longed in her latter days uh, to be able to hear the sounds that she heard in her early life. And I think, think about all that and I think about what it might have been for this man. Listen, this was a real man. He walked on the earth. He he was there and I don't know his age. Uh, I know he was, he was of age because his parents says he's of age. Ask him and I don't know how long he lived without seeing, but I can imagine what he must have felt to see that beautiful blue sky, to see the green grass or see whatever those situations were around him. But yet as beautiful as that is, if you lived the entirety of your life and the only thing you got to see was natural things, how empty my life would be and how empty our lives would be. Aren't you glad he's allowed you to see him? Aren't you glad he's allowed you to see his truth? Aren't you glad and thankful that he's allowed you to see that there's a church that he's put here in this world and a pleasant place to be a good and precious, how good and precious it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Aren't you thankful that he's a he's touched your life? Aren't you thankful what he's done for you and how if this man, I know he was excited as the one that was lame, you know, when he got to his legs, he leaped for joy. I tell you, I believe he was leaping and praising God as he went into the temple. This man, no doubt, was rejoicing in what the Lord had done for him. And he, though he didn't know all about it, I believe he was excited, don't you? You know, God's little children oftentimes don't know all about it, but they come hungry and they come thirsty. And they come wanting the gospel. And that's what the gospel does. It enlightens them. It doesn't give them life, but it brings life and immortality to light. They have eyes that have been given them to see, but the gospel is a light that shines in their life so that they can see who it is that has done these great things. This man knew that he had a savior and he knew, he knew some things about it, but he didn't know a lot about it. Oh, they, when, he, when he went, he came. And I know there's a lot more in this, but this is all I got right now, and I'm thankful for it. It says, some said, this is he. Others, oh, the neighbors, when this man came, he went his way. Let me read. Let me read again. Verse 7. 
and, and said unto him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation sent. And he went his way, therefore, and washed and came seeing. The neighbors, therefore, you know, he looked different, I believe, don't you? This man's seeing now. He looks different. You know, that's what happens to a man. If they, The scripture says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a what? He's a new creature. He's a new creation. Old things pass away, and behold, all things have become new. This man, now that he can see, he looks different. Oh, it looks a little like him, but he looks different. He's acting different. He's talking. He's talking different. This man, this man, he's 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 the the savior has passed his way. The neighbors, therefore, which which had and they which before had seen him that he was blind, said, Is not this he that sat and begged? Some said, This is he. Others said, He's like him. But then he said, I'm he. You know, I believe what he was saying when he said, I am he. I'm that same old blind beggar. I'm that one who was sitting on the side of the road. I'm the one. I'm the one that could not see. Oh, I was blind, but now I can see. I'm that, I'm that old, I'm that old beggar. I've not done anything for him. But all this one that came did so much for me. And that's what he seemed to want to be talking about. And they had, and therefore, therefore said they unto him, How were thine eyes open? And he, he answered and said, A man that is called Jesus. Oh, he, he was right. Jesus was a man. But oh, he was, a, he was the righteous, holy man. He was the son of, of David. He was the son of Abraham. He was the, the, he was the one that was sent as uh, uh, the, the, he was the barely the son of God, the living word that was made flesh and came into this world. Yes, he was man, but he wasn't altogether man. It, it's partly true, but he was more than that. This was the son of God. This was the son of David. He says that man that is called Jesus, and all oh, that name is special, isn't it? What does that word Jesus mean? It means savior. You know why he was called Jesus? Because he was a savior and he is a savior. His name is called Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. And, and that's exactly what he did. Now he said, this man that's called Jesus, he made clay and anointed mine eyes. That doesn't, naturally speaking, that doesn't even sound like it could be. But listen, God moves as the hymn writer wrote in mysterious ways, his wonders to perform. His ways are not like our ways. His thoughts are not like our thoughts. He takes the, the foolish things of this world and confounds the wise. He takes the weak things of this world uh, to confound the mighty. Listen, uh, even in the preaching of the gospel, he has chosen the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Foolish, how? Not foolish preaching, but foolishness in the eyes of the world. But what a benefit it is to God's little children. And how does preaching take place? Only by the power of the Son of God through the work of the Holy Spirit. Man can't take credit for anything because no credit is due him. All credit is due unto the Son of God. He said, I went. In other words, he told me to go to the pool of Siloam and I walked and I went and washed and I received sight. Then said they, they unto him, where is he? He said, I know not. Jesus had gone away from him. He didn't know where he was, but he was testifying of the truth. Those men, the neighbors, brought him to the Pharisees. This, I believe, is a Sanhedrin. They hated him. They despised him. They wanted to find fault with him. And they were about to pick at the point that he, he had healed them, healed him on the Sabbath day. They had made a point earlier that that was uh, where he had transgressed of the law, but he had not transgressed the law. He had not trans transgressed the law of Moses that had been given to them. And Jesus had taught them that. In Matthew chapter 12, you can read about it, how that that which he did was good. And it was, it was what he should be doing. And not only was he, uh, not only was he doing what he should be doing and doing good on the Sabbath day, uh, but he was also the, this man was the Lord of the Sabbath. <laughs> Listen, this, this is the one uh, this is the one that is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Uh, this is the Lord of even the Sabbath. 
What a great Savior we have. And these Pharisees charged him, but they charged him wrongfully. It was the Sabbath day, it says, when Jesus made the clay and opened his eyes. Then, then again, the Pharisees also asked him how he had received his sight. And he said unto them, he put clay upon mine eyes, and I washed and do see. Therefore said some of the Pharisees, this man is not of God, because he keepeth not the Sabbath day. But then there were some other Pharisees. Isn't it wonderful how the Lord just had them all? He, he, when they would come ask him questions, he'd, he'd leave them. They were spinning like a top. They they were trying, they they were all oh they were even confused among themselves they started fighting among themselves reminds me of this old world and how men in this world react they even started turning on one another they said this which is the truth how can a man that is a sinner do such miracles in other words they had the evidence here that this man had opened the eyes of a blind man that had been blind from his birth and that had never been heard of in the history of the world and there was no way to counteract that now they tried to attack it again and they came back to try to do that they went to the parents to try to do that and the parents were so afraid of them that rather than saying even the amount of truth they knew because they feared what was going to happen if they had been kicked out of the synagogue. Now listen, to be kicked out of the synagogue for a Jew would be cut off from your livelihood, to be cut off from your family, be cut off not only from the church life that you had, uh, but from the, the civil life that you had. In every aspect, it means you, you gave up everything that you do. And can you imagine what that would have been like for those parents and also what it would have been like for the blind man? Listen, the blind man ended up experiencing that very thing. But those of his parents, they, 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 they would not say uh, that it, this was not my son. They would not say that he was blind from his birth. Uh, the proof was there again and again. And don't we see that over and again in the life of Jesus, where the proof is there in the mouth of two or three witnesses. The proof is there again and again that what he said was the truth and what the Pharisees were saying was a lie. The Jews did not believe, it says in verse 8. Let me get the what he says in verse 17. They say unto the blind man again, What sayest thou of him? That he had opened thine eyes, and he said, He is a prophet. First of all, he says, He's a man. And then he says, I see more. He's a prophet. He has to be a prophet. Oh, he got it partially right. He is a prophet, but he was more than a prophet, right? The scripture doesn't say Jesus says, I am a way, a truth, and a life. No, he's the way. He's the truth. He's the life. He's not a bread of life. He's the bread of life. He's not a true vine. He's the true vine. He's not a light of the world. He's the light of the world. He's not a prophet. He's the prophet. He's the priest. He's the king. He is our Lord and Lord. Isn't it good? We have such a wonderful, glorious Savior and all of his offices, all that he, he is the one mediator between God and man, the man, the Lord Jesus Christ. He's not just a man. But he is our savior. He is a prophet. But the Jews did not believe concerning him that he had been blind and received his sight until they called the parents of him that had received his sight. And they asked them, saying, Is this your son whom you say was born blind? How then doth he now see? His parents answered them and said, We know that this is our son. No doubt about it. And that he was born blind. We know that's the case. But by what means he now seeth, we know not. Or how he open, had opened his eye, or who hath opened his eyes, we know not. He is of age, ask him. He shall speak for himself. Now get this verse. He said, these words spake the parents, or his parents, because they feared the Jews. For the Jews had agreed already that if any man did confess that he was Christ, he should be put out of the synagogue. Therefore, said his parents, because of that reason, he is of age, ask him, which tell me they knew more about it than they were sharing. They just passed the book. I don't want to pick on them too bad because sometimes we pass the book. No, brethren, sometimes we pass by saying what needs 
to be said. Sometimes the fear of man can affect us. Let's pray that the fear of man will not affect us. Let's pray that we'll stand boldly and steadfastly in perilous times, in difficult times, in whatever the case may be, and always confess be willing to confess what a great and how great Savior we have in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us not be, as the Apostle Paul said, be not ashamed of me, be not ashamed of the testimony of God, nor of me, his prisoner. And brethren, may we not be ashamed of the, oh, let's, let's, let's be so thankful the Lord has allowed us to see these things and where the door of opportunity opens and he gives us an opportunity, let us boldly speak these things in a humble way and in a manner that gives glory and honor, letting our light so shine before men that others may see our good works and glorify our Father, which is in heaven. He says, therefore, and verse 24 says, then again called they the man that was blind and said unto him, give God the praise. They're telling him to do what he's been, what he's been doing. Give God the praise. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered and said, whether he be a sinner or no, I know not. One thing I know, that whereas I was blind, now I see. Boy, that's a good answer, isn't it? <laughs> I don't, I, I'm telling you. Then said they to him again, what did he, what did he to thee? How opened he thine eyes? He answered them, I have told you already, and ye did not hear. Wherefore would ye hear it again? And oh, he's about to stir him up real good. He says, will ye also be his disciples? Are you going to also believe in him? And those, those men that felt so self-righteous, that felt their own ability, that thought they were righteous in and of themselves, uh, they were not willing to submit themselves unto the righteousness of God, uh, but they trusted in their own righteousness. This angered them. Then they reviled him. They reviled the man and said, thou art his disciples, but we are Moses' disciples. How wrong they were. What they thought they were, they were not. They, they thought they were keeping the law good enough, that their righteousness was good enough. But oh, they had fallen short as all men sin and come short of the glory of God. And if they had truly been Moses' disciples, they would have embraced the Lord Jesus Christ. If they had been truly the sons of Abraham, as men claim to be, they would have embraced Jesus because he uh, was taught, uh, Abraham talked about the Messiah and his coming. So did Moses. So did all the prophets and the law testified of his coming. We know that God spake unto Moses. As for this fellow, we know not from whence he is. And the man answered and said unto them, Why in herein is a marvelous thing that ye that are so smart, that are so wise, that are so bold, you know not from whence he is. And yet, what has he done? Proof positive he's opened the eyes of a man who had never been able to see. How do you explain that? Oh, they could not. And yet, you can read over in Isaiah 35 and Isaiah 61 about the Messiah and one of the gifts of the Messiah, according to the testimony of our Lord himself in Luke 4, was that he would open the eyes of the blind. <laughs> and that's exactly what he had done. It says, now we know that God heareth not sinners, but if any man be a worshiper of God, he doeth and doeth his will, he, he, him he heareth. In other words, what he's saying that if Jesus had been a fraud, if Jesus had been uh, 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 someone who was trying to uh, do magician's tricks, if Jesus had been anything other than what he was, God would not have blessed him to be able to do the wonderful works that he had done. And the proof was positive in that which he had done. And he says this in verse 33, if this man were not of God, he could do nothing. But I'm telling you, this man was sent by God. This was the son of God. This was the one that he sent to save his people from their sins. And they answered and said unto him, thou was altogether born in sins. And dost thou teach us? Do you hear their self-righteousness? Oh, sometimes the self-righteousness of man just is glaring. And here it is. And they cast him out. That means they did what they said they were going to do for anyone who would embrace Jesus. And though he had not publicly done that, uh, yet they, he was close enough for them that they cast him out. 
I love verse 35 because it says, and Jesus heard that they had cast him out. Oh, oh, listen, does Jesus, we sing that hymn, Jesus knows. Jesus knows. Isn't it good to know that he knows? He didn't have to hear it from the words of men. He knew as God omniscient, he knew all things. Jesus heard that they had cast him out, and when he had found him, oh, Jesus found him. Who found who? Jesus found him. And when he had found him, he didn't have to go. He knew right where he was. He went right to him. And when he had found him, he said unto him, Dost thou believe on the Son of God? He even asked him a question that he already knows what the answer is going to be that's in the heart of that man because Jesus is, Jesus is the author and he's the finisher of our faith. In other words, if we have faith to be enabled to believe, Jesus is the one who's the beginner of it. And Jesus, the one who began that work in us, will perform it when? Until the day of Jesus Christ. He says, Does thou believe on the Son of God? He answered and said, Who is he, Lord, that I might believe on him? He just, he needed information, didn't he? He needed to hear who he was. And oh, he's about to hear it from the mouth of the greatest preacher who ever preached. Uh, from the mouth of the, of the Son of God himself. From the mouth of the same one who said close to these words to the little woman at the well. He says, Jesus said unto him, Thou hast both seen him, and it is he that talketh with thee. And he said, Lord, I believe. May we say that in our hearts tonight by the grace of God. And then he did what we ought to be doing every day, every hour, every moment, every opportunity that we have. And he worshiped him. And that's where worship belongs. It doesn't belong to an angel. Certainly it doesn't belong to a preacher doesn't belong to a church or any church organization. It doesn't belong to man. And God forbid we give any bit of the glory that belongs only to the Lord, to anyone but the Lord. Let us worship him like this man did because of the grace that God gave him and the ability God gave him. Thanks be to God. He was able by the grace to say, I believe and he worshiped him. I appreciate your kind attention. When you have a mind to pray, remember me and God bless you. We certainly are thankful once again for the uh, workings and the power of the Spirit of God in our worship service this evening. Uh, we are thankful. Uh, for the message that we've been able to hear. And I think that each one of us uh, can relate uh, to what was done to the blind man. Um, and, um, and we, you know, as Brother Gary said, that uh, he was able to worship because of the workings that the Lord had poured out upon him as, as a result of his compassion. Uh, we're thankful uh, that uh, the blind man was a faithful worshiper to the Lord. Um, I know that each one of us are thankful for the things that we are able to see with our eyes of faith. Um, you know, and how tremendous it is as we can become, since he's given us this spiritual faith, this spiritual eyesight, that we can become blinded to the things of the world. As Brother Gary said, you know, we are this new creation. We're this new creature. We love things that we hated and we hate things that we love because of the, the compassion that the Lord has on his people. And um, I really appreciate you bringing out that point about um, that the Lord knew that he had been cast out. <laughs> he knew that. And uh, the Lord being compassionate as he is, came to him and let him know that thou hast both seen and it is he that talketh with thee that is with you. So we're, we're thankful uh, for the encouragement that this message brings to us. 
uh, we're thankful for it's just a, a you know after after the Lord gave him sight he just didn't leave him you know he was there with him so praise God praise God for this uh, we're thankful for the uh, study that uh, brother Gary puts forth in the word and meditation that he puts forth in it that he can uh, bring it uh, that uh, the children of the Lord may feast upon it uh, we're thankful for that uh, brother Caleb what number do you have for us to sing uh, Elder Eddie I've turned to number 94 in the 11th edition number 89 and 12 94 and 89 we'll sing the first last and chorus <clears throat> Lord willing, um, we will have meetings this upcoming weekend, uh, Sunday evening, singing beginning at six o'clock at Meadow Creek, Elder Dan Parker. Lord willing, will be there. Uh, we ask uh, your prayers uh, for that service as well as um, the services that are upcoming. Um, you know, eat, you know, we a lot of times we. Say we have a special service coming up or a special meeting, but I got to tell you, every meeting should have that same thought put towards it and prayer put towards it. Um, you know, I'm thankful for this special meeting that I was able to attend this evening. We are able to hear prayers and sing hymns to God. And hear about the compassion of our sweet Lord Jesus Christ that he has upon his people. So, um, does anyone have any other announcements?
already uh, Pleasant Grove is going to have their communion service this weekend. Uh, they'll have Elder Travis Williams with them Saturday at 3. And then they'll have uh, services, I believe, at 1030 Sunday. And then communion following lunch Sunday. Okay. Thank you, Brother Caleb. All right. Anything else? All right. Uh, if we could, we'd like to ask uh, Brother Gene Heron if he would uh, close service with prayer. Our most gracious and eternal Heavenly Father, we come before thee tonight thanking thee, Lord, for this meeting, thanking thee, Lord, for thy word that we can read about the miracles that thou hast done. We can read about how thou came down from heaven and took on the body of a man and suffered and bled and died upon that old rugged cross and saved the people that will be with thee in heaven in immortal glory forever and ever. Lord, there's been many that's been called out here tonight that stands in need of prayer. We pray for them. Pray for each one that's gathered with us tonight, Lord, that thou would be with them and bless them. We pray for our services this weekend. We pray for Brother Gary and the loss that they have of this precious sister at Happy Creek Church. Be with him and the whole church body, Lord. And we pray for Brother Eddie, Lord, that thou would be with him and bless him days to come. Be with all those, Lord, for whom it is our duty to pray. In Jesus' blessed and holy name we ask it all. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Gene. Brother Gary, God bless you. We feel the Lord has delivered you yet once again. Uh, Just appreciate so much being able to be here each Wednesday night and it's been such a blessing to us and so many of our folks in this area. Uh, we love you all and uh, just feel like uh, just so thankful for what the Lord's allowed us to have in the way of fellowship. Appreciate that sweet prayer, prayer uh, Brother Aaron and Brother Eddie. Appreciate you so much. God bless y'all. God bless you, Brother Aaron. Lord, the, the sermon, Jordan the prayers and um, love you all. Love you, brother. Love you, brother. Bye. It's good to see you there. It's good to see you, brother Ned. Hope you're doing good. I think he's talking, brother. He's got muted. <laughs> Yeah, there, there you go. You are, you are, there you go. Darryl, I, I think, I think I'm unmuted now, but I'm thankful to be here. Uh, I don't get to attend every meeting, but uh, I'm thankful for this, this one. And I, I certainly enjoyed that, Brother Gary and uh, Brother Eddie. We enjoyed the prayer and. Uh, Pictures over there. God bless you. God bless you, you brother. Love y'all. Take care, brother Ned. Sure, Thank good you. to see you, brother Ned. We love you all. God bless. God bless you. And uh, hey, sister Lord. <laughs> this is brother Russ. Russ. God bless you. I see you there. <laughs> Glad to see you. Bye bye, everybody. Bye-bye. We love you all. Love you all. Take care. Ho hope you all have a good night and hope to see you all again soon. Thank Ooh. you. Say, say bye. 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 Bye, Reese. Bye. Bye, Reese. Bye, Lucy. Bye. There you go. Bye. Here, the camera's right there. There you go. All right. Good night, y'all. Bye.